All right. I think I want to include you viewers on YouTube in this uh, video because it's not really going to be showing you anything different than I normally do. Just going to be smoothing the body out as much as I can. Okay, I'm going to get it on the face. Now remember, once you do this waxing, I mean this uh, lighter fluid on the uh, clay, you can't work on it for quite a while. You have to let the uh, clay, uh, well, it the lighter fluid eventually evaporates, but it takes a while, and until it does, it's rather oily. And so you can't really work on your clay until it's completely evaporated. There were quite a bit of rough areas on the face, and I just wanted to get those uh, cleaned up a little bit. Because my next uh, little bit of work is going to be on the uh, hair. And I want to have it ready. Last night I had a uh, idea to change the angle of this uh, battle axe. And I thought of bringing it down and just letting it sit on the edge of the uh, base. And the reason I thought of doing that is because it actually looks pretty damn good from every angle that way. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to work on his hand right now. And see, that way, I don't have to have a huge stick st sticking out here, and it'll make it a lot easier for the uh, foundry to cast it this way. I got one problem, I think, and that is the wire that goes through his hand is sticking out way too far, so I'm going to have to push that wire, since it's aluminum, I can push it back there. And, uh, That'll work out just fine. But anyway, I'm just going to do the fingers into the uh, clay. Take my ecliptic tool that you can get from Sculpture Depot in Loveland, Colorado. It's a tool that was designed by Karen, who owns uh, Sculpture Depot. Okay, I'm going to put in the knuckles here.
push the handle more towards the front of the hand. There we go. And let's do the thumb. Mm. I'm going to put a uh, leather wrapping around his wrist. I'm going to put some kind of design on that uh, wrapping around his wrist, but not right now. The thing you got to be careful with, with, though, is if you're doing pants or a shirt or something like that, you got to be careful not to uh, <laughs> take your wrinkles and dig them into the surface of the uh, leg. You got to have it go to the surface of the leg. I I did a bust many, many years ago back in the uh, 70s of a frontiersman and I took it to my uncle who's a sculptor and had him uh, look at it and give me pointers and stuff like that. And I had a neckerchief going around his neck and my uncle said, well, how deep into the chest do you want that uh, neckerchief to go? And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, you've got the, the neckerchief cutting about a quarter of an inch into his chest. And when I saw it, looked at it with his eyes, I could see that I had uh, cut into the body of the frontiersman uh, with the uh, wrinkles in his... Uh, scarf. So I quickly corrected that and it looked a hundred times better. But uh, you got to be mindful of uh, the surface of the body and uh, how far in the uh, wrinkles go. You can't have them cutting into the body. What I'm going to do now, after I get done tuning up the uh, pants leg a little bit so I can put his sword on, I'm going to uh, clean up the body or his uh, chest and upper torso. As you saw, I already did his face. And... Uh, with some lighter fluid. I want to do the same thing with his pants and uh, as well. 
I'm going to put a wrinkle right there. Being careful not to dig too deep into the uh, pants because I don't want it going into the leg itself. When and if you do a sculpture of uh, somebody in clothing, it's always helpful to have a model pose for you with the kind of clothing that you're going to be putting on the figure. Uh, I don't have that opportunity, so I'm just... Uh, I've done enough wrinkles in my life that uh, I can guess how they'd appear. One nice thing about my instructional DVDs is the fact that I've got over 50 years of experience to share with you. And uh, there we go. All right. Now I'm going to hit uh, the sculpture with a little bit of Ronsonol lighter fluid. I gotta get the thing open. There we go. And I got a brush. Oh, there it is. Sometimes it gets buried underneath different tools. This just takes down the uh, roughness of the uh, material that I've just created. I may or may not go back and put a texture into the clothing. I don't know yet. But for now, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing with the robe but not today. By the way, once you do this, like I said about the face, you can't do anything with the clay for at least an hour or so. Okay, I'm gonna get the body. Smooth it out a little bit. It's got a metal thing right here at the brush. You got to be careful not to press so hard that you cut into it with the uh, the metal. And what this does is it melts the clay a little bit and just uh, allows you to fill in little holes like I'm doing right here. I may have to go back and do that better. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, going to be his sword, and uh, it's going to be sheathed and hanging off of his uh, waist. But for now, I'm just going to clean up what I've sculpted so far. By the way, I am thinking about casting this in resin, uh, which will make it uh, affordable for more people than a bronze. I was talking to somebody today about that possibility. We'll see what we can do. Instead of selling for thousands of dollars, I can sell it for a hundred, I cut several hundred dollars. Still not cheap, but more in the line of people who can afford that much. All right, coming back later.
give me a thumbs up and share my video and then check out my instructional DVDs uh, the link down below this video all right see you next time